Grace, peace, mercy, and blessings be unto you, beloved, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. I am the Apostle J.E. Cooper, a.k.a. BBJ, and I am the shepherd servant of the God Corps Kingdom Power Moving Church Global Assembly. God Corps stands for God's Kingdom Outreach Revival Explosion, and that is the manifestation of who we are as BBJ's worldwide believers blessing Jesus. I want to welcome you to part 11. This is the part 11 of the teaching, the revelation of the true church. And if you don't mind, I want to just get right into the word. Hallelujah. All right. Well, the true church is built upon the word of God. You see, the holy word of God. And being that the true church is really built upon the holy word of God, you can never reach the world unless you are preaching and teaching the holy word. Did you catch that? You'd be surprised the type of uh, tools and different things that people are teaching and preaching from and different philosophies of men who are well-renowned uh, philosophers and, uh, uh, you know, all type of different type of references that people are reaching out to to, uh, to validate the authenticity of the word of God. But I want to encourage you, all of you who believe the word of God, all of you BBJs, believers blessing Jesus all over the world, to every minister of the gospel, I want to encourage you, if you've gotten away from the word of God, I want to encourage you right here, right now, get back to the word. Because if you're going to reach the world, you need to preach and teach the word. Hallelujah. And so once again, the true church of Jesus Christ is built upon the foundation of the word of God. And I want you to, I want, I want to deal with this. I want to give a disclaimer. As I often say, the word of God is for believers. Yes, the Bible is for believers. But I, but if someone's to cry out and want to be saved, yes, you can be born again. Romans 10 and 9, that is excellent for salvation and for guidance in that area. But hear me clearly. The Bible is for the believer. There are benefits in living for God. Matter of fact, I want to go to this real quick. There are benefits in living for God. You don't mind if we search the scriptures here, do you? Hallelujah. But uh, we, we need to understand that there are benefits. Most people say, well, why would I live for God? I mean, whatever. You know, all that church stuff. I'm not talking about church stuff. I'm talking about real stuff. I'm not talking about religious. I'm talking about stuff that's just real. And when you look at... um. For instance, Psalm 1 and 121, the Bible says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help, my help coming from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Surely, surely people are in need for help in this hour. But where's your help coming from? It's not coming from the government. It's not coming from your local, your, your local uh, politicians. It's not coming from them. There may be some type of temporary gesture of some type of relief or some type of, you know, some type of, uh, uh, you know, some type of thing in place that you feel like, wow, they're really doing something for me. But the truth of the matter is only God can really bless you. Only God can really save you. Only God can really keep you. Only God can really cover you. It takes the power of God. And that will never happen for you unless you first believe the word of God. Are you following me here? So once again, my disclaimer is this. The Bible is for believers. There are many people amongst us who we frequent every day. People we engage with. People we work around. People we go to school with. People sometimes even living in your house. There are people who they have toxic spirits. Let me say that again. They have, do I need to scratch that? Tick, 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 toxic, toxic spirits. Their spirit, they have contaminated spirits. Their spirits are toxic. And, and they're very, they're, they're all, they're very assignment here on the earth. Their purpose, many of them, is to debunk and, 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 and devalue and, and, and really try to uh, take away from the authenticity of the word of God. What they want to do is they want to discredit the fact that the word of God is the only word that, that you, you can stand on and have stability in this life and the life uh, to come. I'm telling you the word of God is true. I want to encourage you. This is real. And so uh, the devil himself knows that we're in a day and a time that his time is very short. So yes, 
He's roaming to and fro through the earth. He's doing what he does. He's the prince of the air. He's controlling airwaves and all type of things dealing with radio and television. You wonder why the craziness that's on television. Why, why is the craziness that's on the radio? Because the enemy, Satan, the enemy of God, the father of all the enemies of the people of God, the devil himself, the chief archangel of, 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 of all demonic activity, he knows that his time is very short. And so he's he's doing what he, he has to do. And he's on his job. The question is, as a believer, are you on yours? You have to understand in this hour that Satan is not playing games. He's not playing pity pat. He's not, he not playing pity pat. He's not playing Miss Mary Mac. He's not, you know what I'm saying? He, he's not playing around. He's looking to stab you in your heart, to stab you in your back, to take you out out of here. He's looking to flatline you and everything you love. And that's why you're dealing with so much hell in your house. That's why you're dealing with so much hell on the job. That's why you're dealing with so much hell in your community. That's why the streets are horrible. That's why it's very difficult to find a good neighbor anywhere because someone has received the spirit of the enemy and they have assassinated, they have stabbed, they have they have mugged and, and kidnapped and taken away the, the reality of the neighbor. Listen, neighborhood is a compound word. We learned that in grade school. Neighborhood. You take away the neighbor, what you got left? Just the hood. And this is why America is just one big hood. One big hood. That's it. And people say, I remember there was a time when this and there was a time with that. That sounds good. But those days are gone because someone ha ha has, has assassinated the sanctity and the love and the respect of the neighbor. Yes, there once was a time where you had neighborhood watch. They look out for you. They look out for your children. Children can't even go outside and play no more. You know what it is today? Neighborhood watch. Neighborhood watch people rob you. Neighborhood watch people rape you. Neighborhood watch people break in your house. Neighborhood watch people disrespect your mama. Neighborhood watch people. And you know what everybody's doing? They have their phone. Everybody's a videographer. Everybody has a media ministry. Everybody is videotaping everything. People have been killed, people have been murdered, people have been raped and robbed, and people stand around and they, they videotape. You know why? Because they want likes. They want to build up their brand. They want people to hit their page. They want people to, you know, see their Snapchat and, and you know, and blow up their YouTube. They, they, want to, they want to build up their numbers. But let me tell you something. <laughs> that day is coming when you're going to wish, if, that, if that's you, you're going to wish you put that phone down and you lift your hands up and you look up and say, God, save me. God, sanctify me. Show me your way, Lord. Show me your way. I don't want to be left down here. The day is coming. Uh, the old saints used to say, you know, payday is coming after a while. He said, what them people talking about? Payday is coming after a while. Every day I live, every day, every new mercy I get to see and experience, I get to see and understand now as a man of wisdom in the things of God that, that payday is coming after a while. And if you don't believe, just keep on living for the Bible decrees and declares, oh, that the wages of sin is death. Oh, but the gift of God is eternal life through who? Uh, Jesus Christ, ain't nobody else, nobody else, as Flavor Flav said it many years ago, ain't nobody going to free you, ain't nobody going to come and see you. Let me tell you something, the only one, <laughs> hallelujah, is Jesus the Christ. There's only one, hallelujah. So we need to bring it together and understand true unity is in Christ. It, it, it is in Christ, no one else. And as I'm teaching this lesson about the revelation of the true church, it's very important that you understand, hallelujah, that we need to come together. Coming together just bodily in the physical realm, that don't mean a hill of beans because there's a lot of people in one place and they're still confused. But let me tell you what the spirit of unity will do. And the Bible is, is right. Hallelujah. The Bible addresses all these things. We just have to get in the word and stop listening to what other people are saying. And finally, give ear to what the spirit of the Lord, the most high God is saying through his word. Because God is speaking, but people just not listening. They are not listening. Ah, uh, but I tell you this, payday is coming after a while. You watch and see. Psalm 133 says this, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in what? In unity. That's Psalm 133, in unity. Isn't that beautiful? 
Now, we've heard that over and over again, but for some reason, we just can't seem to get ourselves together because there's a power struggle. There's an identity crisis. There's a problem with respecting the word. So what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about the word. What is it? What is the word? 